One of the best ways of remembering the structures inside your prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells is to learn how to draw them. So let's start by drawing a prokaryotic cell. And I'm going to draw an oval shape here to represent the cell membrane. And surrounding that I'm going to draw another oval and that is going to be my cell wall. There we go. And then finally the capsule which surrounds both the cell membrane and the cell wall. And you make it three-dimensional if you like. Now I'm going to draw the anchors for the flagellum. And these are just small ovals that are embedded in the cell wall and also some that are embedded in the cell membrane. And you can just draw some nice long flagellum tails like this. You can also draw some pili, just draw some little hair-like structures, make sure that they're embedded into the cell membrane. You could draw them all the way around just like this. Now for the internal structures of the cell, just draw some little circles to represent ribosomes just all throughout the cytoplasm here and they're different from the plasmids DNA because I draw the plasmid DNA like this just a larger circle and then you can also draw a larger circular chromosome for the DNA that's pretty much it for a prokaryotic cell just make sure that you label everything So let's take a look at an animal cell. This time I'm going to start by drawing a rough circle shape which is going to represent my cell membrane. Inside of that the most obvious structure is going to be my nucleus with a nucleolus. It kind of looks like a fried egg. Surrounding that, you're going to want to draw your endoplasmic reticulum, which I draw like this to represent sort of the lots of folds and creases that increase the surface area in the endoplasmic reticulum. Just draw lots of squiggly lines that join up like this. Now, of course, there's both smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum in your cell. And I'll draw a rough endoplasmic reticulum. And the only difference is simply that I'm going to draw a bunch of little ribosomes on the outside. Just like this, just little dots or circles if you like. And I'll draw one more smooth ER. The students often get confused between the ER and the Golgi body and I'll draw one in a little bit to show you the difference. So now I'm going to draw my mitochondrion which is just a large sort of I guess sausage shape and inside of it you draw your secondary membrane with lots of folds in it. Now cells that are going to have a lot of mitochondria in it might be in parts of your body that require lots of energy. So I'm going to draw a few more mitochondria in here. Just draw some simple circles to represent your temporary vacuoles throughout the cell. I'll put a few more up the top here like this. That's pretty simple. Now for your Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. I kind of draw these like a bunch of sort of, I guess, sausages. They look a bit like sausages to me. You can kind of distinguish that from 
your ER in that they have um, not sort of quite as wiggly and they flare out at the ends. And of course some ribosomes, just some dots down here. Of course they'd be all throughout the cytoplasm normally but I'm just going to represent them down here. And finally, just make sure that you label all of your structures. Nice and clearly. So now I'm going to try drawing a plant cell. And I'll start again by drawing the membrane. And when I draw plant cells, I tend to make the cell membrane a lot more rigid looking. Because this is what they look like to me under a microscope. And of course surrounding that, you want to draw your cell wall. Which helps it give it that rigid shape. There we go. Inside of that, of course, your most prominent organelle is the nucleus with a little nucleolus in it, or your fried egg. And then, of course, your chloroplasts, which you can draw typically as this kind of oval shape with these stacks in it, which are called granum, and they're little stacks of thylakoids. There we go. Now, plants will typically have quite a lot of these, so I'll draw a few more. I'll draw some temporary vacuoles, which don't necessarily have to be oval shaped, you can make them circular if you like. And now I'm going to draw a mitochondrion. I'm going to draw it slightly differently than I did in the, the plant, oh, sorry, the animal cell. There you go, I'll just draw the inner membrane like that instead. Draw another one down here. And of course, finally, on the inside, you're going to want to draw your large, permanent vacuole. Now all you're going to do is label everything. And hopefully that will help you remember how to draw both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, both animal and plant cells.